we go. Um, Sarah Hidney, inaugural captain of the Hurricanes women's team. Um, take us back to take us back to the beginning for you in terms of rugby and also your childhood growing up. Yeah, so I didn't start playing rugby until I was thirteen at Fielding High School, and um, oh, a lot of people know, but Rob Jones was a coach there. He got me into the sport, and I just absolutely loved it right from the get go. The people I got to play alongside, all my best mates were going to play, and so yeah, it was about creating friendships, and I just loved the sport for what it was. And in terms of um, 2021, pretty big year for you. Obviously, year started off on a bit of a sad note, but winning the Olympics and things like that and then joining the Hurricanes pole and things like that. Tell us a little bit about that from a rugby perspective, first of all. Yeah, it was an amazing year uh, for rugby and to be able to achieve a goal that a number of us had had for a long time at the Olympics was absolutely um, amazing and special and emotional all in, all in one go. So... Yeah, to, to achieve something like that um, was amazing for New Zealand. And then to be able to be named um, as a as a player in the Hurricanes Power team as well it was a pretty surreal year, really. Um, and something that I probably hadn't really looked into to play in a super team, but had always followed the Hurricanes, um, still have jerseys from when I was a kid. And to then be named in the in the same club as people you kind of idolise is, yeah, it's, it's a pretty surreal feeling. And in, in terms of um, the polo team itself, your sister recently got named as well. Um, I know she didn't take up rugby until a little bit after you and she's got a full-time career outside of rugby as well. Um, how special is it for you to now have played club representative rugby and, and now hopefully super rugby with her? Yeah, when she got named, it was a pretty big deal for our family. Um, and just knowing how hard she had worked to put herself in a position to be um, selected. So, yeah, when she sent us the message to say that she was getting contracted, um, our family chat blew up quite a lot because, like you said, she works full time. She's an accountant. She's got two kids. So to balance now a, um, a semi-professional rugby <laughs> Uh, career outside of or alongside that sorry is um is pretty inspiring for me and to be able to play hopefully alongside her in the upcoming campaign will just be yeah pretty it'll start the year off on a high note awesome and in terms of in terms of that obviously you guys have played at every kind of every level together minus sevens um you guys have got a pretty close bond um how you know how important is family to you yeah family is everything to me it's um like they're my biggest supporters, but probably some of my biggest critics. So it'll be pretty cool to be able to um, to help encourage each other on, on the field, but also give each other some good feedback at the end of games and stuff as well. So I'm sure that um, that'll be yeah, it'll be it'll be awesome to be able to just play alongside her and um, and then also have our family there supporting us as well. Nice. And just in terms of sevens, um, obviously you're a foundation member of the Blackburn Sevens when the program first came out as the New Zealand Women's Sevens back in 2013, I think it was. 2012. Um, 2012, sorry. Um, I guess from from that being, I guess, a new team to this being a new team, what what kind of takeaways from that can you were you hoping to translate across to the 15s game? I think first and foremost, it's just showing how much it's the, the women's game has developed and been fortunate enough to be able to be at the start of the Sevens program and now the Hurricanes polar side at... Um, to me, it's a lot. It's nice. There's no expectation. Um, there's, it's just about being free and being who we are. And I think to be able to learn some things in the Sevens environment and bring it into the, the Hurricanes team is the closer we can connect as a team off the field um, and the faster that growth is, the easier it is for us to be able to su um, succeed on the field. And I think we've started that off pretty well. The last two camps, the connection camp um, that we had in um, Makeka was absolutely amazing and I think the growth of our team has in one week has shot up pretty high so yeah the the more time we have together um, the easier those connections are and yeah the better off we are on the field. In, in terms of the competition it's pretty groundbreaking for women's rugby this is a massive year for women's rugby in the world not not just New Zealand um, what are you hoping that um, Super Rugby can inspire in the next gen of women's rugby players? Oh uh, just like uh, I think for me is about making that impact and making that impact around the world and um, just creating another opportunity for young girls and boys to want to aspire to keep um, 
driving through passions and being committed to something um, because opportunities do arise and like this one has is um, you know, we're now playing for uh, the Hurricane Super Club which is yeah probably a few years ago would have been not talked about so yeah for me it's just about continuing to make an impact off the field and show that um, when an opportunity comes just grab it with two hands and, and go with it. Nice. And in terms of the team, so looking at our Hurricanes Power team, there's some pretty talented players in there. And the forwards also in the backs, quite a young team as well. Um, obviously, we've got Jacks at the older end, and then we've got some girls 18, 19. Some of them look about 12. Um, <laughs> but who's, who's some of the players to look out for in your eyes? Um, for me, other than the obvious ones who have been dominating over the last few years, uh, play for the Black Ferns and the Black Fern Sevens, to me, it'll probably be the likes of Kara Stellinger. Um, the first five played for the Cyclones. Absolutely amazing talent and has been there or thereabouts. But for her to have an opportunity to play at this level, I think it's going to be really exciting for her. And, um, and I think probably... Um, another one, Sapphire Abraham, she's very young in the front row um, and has, yeah, has committed to playing for the Hurricanes, um, obviously from Auckland. So to be able to have another youngster like that in, in this kind of environment, you can see them thriving already off the field. And we obviously had a couple of trainings on the field and you've just seen how special they really are. So I think those two will be a really cool watch for us. Awesome. And in terms of yourself, um, you haven't played 15s for a few years now. You might have played the odd club game and a few games for the Cyclones, but first proper return to 15 since the World Cup back in 2017. How's that? How are you finding the adjustment so far going from 7s to 15s and then back to 7s during the week? Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous by that, to be honest. Um, obviously, I pride myself on being really prepared and um, especially for sevens but to not have the game time or, or things like that behind me in 15s um, like I know I've got a lot of work to do so just trying to do everything that I can back here before we go into camps um, doing my homework as best that I can and just try and put my um, yeah just trying to do things that I know that will help the team out and at the end of the day when I obviously if I get the opportunity to put the Hurricanes Polo jersey on then I'm just going to go as hard as I can and um, sometimes that might be a speed bump in the forward pack but that's all right I'll, I know that I'll give everything I possibly can to this team. Nice nice and in terms of I guess just that preparation so you'll give people a bit of an insight so obviously you assemble for four days around your matches and training camps what does the rest of the week look like for you in terms of your training obviously with the sevens but also trying to translate across the 15s plus how they remotely monitor you yeah so we're pretty lucky that we'll, we'll be based with the hurricanes um power team from thursday to sunday depending on when the game is we'll get back on a sunday night um, monday will be used as a recovery slash flush day and then uh, tuesday wednesdays will be back into somewhat of a training depending on how we're feeling and we're fortunate enough that with the sevens management um, they will allow us to not come back into sevens as such so our training will be based around still um, high speed uh, mets but it will also be around what do we need in the week to help us to prepare for the game on Saturday so like yeah it's, it's been really awesome and obviously we uh, well, the sevens girls are coming into super we're all in different teams so depending on what we need as individuals and so I'm like really enjoying being able to show the schedule this is what I need I'm obviously one of the only girls who are in the forward pack so I'll need a lot more set piece and things like that so I just I've been trying to find people who can help me with that in the week while I'm back home um, here in the mount but yeah and then just go all in and get as much as I can and when we're back in as a team as well. Nice. In in terms of your leadership style, one thing I noticed was um, you don't you don't say much, you lead by your actions and the girls really follow that. How would you how would you how would you like describe yourself as a leader? Um, for me, like I I I'm, I feel like I'm really self-aware. So I know um, my strengths but I know also my weaknesses and so for me as being a leader I know what other leader's strengths are as well and I need them to help me and that's that like and that's what I'll do for the Hurricanes power team as well as I'll utilize the other leaders that I've got around me we've got some amazing people in our team um, management included and 
So being able to utilize everyone's strengths to lead this team is going to be important for when we're in games, um, when we're at home, when obviously I'm in the mountain, a lot of the girls are obviously down in Wellington or Manawatu. So yeah, just being able to utilize everyone's strengths to not just me as the, um, as the captain, but also as the other leaders in the environment as well. Perfect. And lastly, um, if I guess if you look back now and you were talking to an eight-year-old Sarah and you knew that there was super rugby on the horizon, what, what's one thing you'd say to her? Um, geez, that's... It's deep, right? <laughs> yeah, it's deep. I'm like, life's pretty special and you'll have some amazing opportunities. And uh, the jersey that you now fit in, that you owned when you were eight years old, you'll get one that fits it properly. <laughs> Nice, love that. <laughs> so good. Awesome. Thanks. I'll just pause that recording there. Um, and so just if you, you had one, I guess, one message to the, the people in the Hurricanes region from the Hurricanes Power, what, what would that be? For us, playing for the Hurricanes Power is a dream come true. We get to represent our provinces um, and our wider region of the Hurricanes. So we would love for the region to get behind us, to back us, to support us as much as you can, um, whether that's in game, whether that's on TV, during social media, uh, any support helps us and we can feel that support from afar. So um, please get behind us. We are doing this for you guys. And in terms of the Hurricanes members and fans, we're obviously looking forward to a home game against the NIB Blues on the 12th of March. Any, any messages for the, for the members and fans you're looking to get along to that one? We just can't wait to meet our fans. We um, can't wait to play in front of you. We can't wait to show you um, how much we've been working on um, rugby-wise as a team. And yeah, just meeting, interacting with as many fans as we can. And we can't wait to see you guys there. And hopefully uh, you're wearing as much um, yellow and black as you can. Job done. I think that's us. Awesome.